Today, we're going to look at this and break down exactly what you should expect when you get one. Let's get settled in as we take a deep dive into the Harley Benton Fusion T. Making this demo, I asked people in the community tab what they wanted to see when I made this. DC Mabo and James Silver asked a really similar question about the neck shape and how it feels to play. Harley Benton describe it as a modern C profile on their specs online. I find the modern C profile is a really nice middle ground between thin shreddy and big fat baseball bat chunky. I compared the Fusion 3 neck to the necks of the Ibanez AZ and the Fusion T is within that ballpark too. If I think about it really hard, I think the Fusion T is just a little bit slimmer. Or it might be my mind playing tricks on me. Who knows? The fretboard radius is 305mm, which is as close as damn it to 12 inches. Personally, I really like a 12 inch radius. Again, it is a really nice middle ground between thin, flat and shreddy, and rounded and vintage feeling. For me, a 7.25 inch radius is too rounded because it means that you can't lower the action to a point where it becomes easier to play. So it makes these kind of necks really hard work. Conversely, flatter radiuses allow you to slam the action down. But I find because of the thinner necks, my hands get fatigued after a while. A 12 inch radius is a perfect compromise for me. I know there are those out there that don't agree though. So drop down your preferred radius in the comments below. As for the setup out of the box, it was okay. The action was around 1.5mm at the dusty end of the fretboard. And of course I used a very scientific method to test this. For most, this would be seen as a decent job. The Origami Army over at Threads called this type of action the crowd pleaser. And there were plenty of people that backed him up and said that this was well within acceptable standards. This has been a consistent style of setup that I've noticed across the Harley Benton range. Reasonable but not low. It makes a lot of sense that Harley Benton would go with an action that is the crowd pleaser. And in their defense, it has been a consistent in all of the Harley Benton guitars that I've owned. That being said, I like my action low. I've put a little shim in the neck pocket and raised up the saddles a bit to avoid any choking on bends. This has led to an action that is not only low, but consistent across the board too. This is a real testament to the fret work that they do over at Harley Benton because if you lower the action, any inconsistencies in that fretwork will be highlighted. With the Fusion 3, I made some parallels between that and the Charvel Pro Mod DK24. As it happens, the Fusion T also draws some pretty strong parallels between that and the Charvel Pro Mod SoCal. I am sure that you can agree with this. Both guitars have a fender scale length and a very similar nut width. Both guitars use the Graftec Tusk XL nut also. Both guitars boast locking tuners, a floating two point trem system and a dual humbucker design as well. We're going to talk about the hardware on the Fusion T in a little bit more depth later as it is well worth mentioning. There are however differences in spec and design that make these two stand out a load more than the difference between the Fusion 3 and the DK24. First of all, the control layout is a big difference. The Fusion T pulls those volume and tone parts further out the way. The SoCal, however, keeps them really close to the strings. So you can see this as an advantage or a design flaw based on your personal preference. 
If you like to use the volume control for swells and don't have absolutely massive shovel hands like Gary Moore, then having the controls really close to the strings is an advantage. However, if you find that having controls too close to the strings gets in the way, then the Fusion T has the advantage. Just as an aside here, the Charvel sports some Fishman Fluence pickups, so has got a little mini toggle switch to alter the voicings. We will ignore that mini toggle just for now. The Charvel opts for a more modern 24 frets, whereas the Fusion T goes for a more traditional 22. Those 24 frets on the Charvel are jumbo frets but not stainless, like are on the Harley Benton. The Charvel sports a pit guard, which is only an aesthetic choice, but is a difference, so it's worth a mention anyway. The final thing that I wanted to note is that Charvel have opted for a compound radius board, so from 12 inches all the way down to 16 at the dusty end. A compound radius is a really popular choice for modern manufacturers, and I imagine it will be really comfortable when you're going up for those spotlight moments. I don't think there is any argument to be had that the Fusion T is at least a little bit inspired by the SoCal, but it's different enough to be its own thing. Let me know if you think it is in those comments below, or if it is just a Charvel imitator. If you have visited this channel before, you will know that I am not a big fan of the Roswell pickups that they have in Harley Benton guitars. I always find the Roswell pickups are lacking, and the ones in the Fusion T are no different. In fact, I would go as far to say, out of all of the Harley Bentons that I own, I think these are the worst sounding pickups of the lot. <laughs> now possibly, this could be because I am predominantly a single coil player, so it's always going to have a tough time. It could also be, however, because they are hot street trash. To me, they are soft sounding and undefined. When I first plugged them in, I thought I'm going to have to change these pickups immediately. In my mind, I know that I'm not going to want to play this guitar knowing how it sounds. It was kind of disheartening knowing that I'd have to prioritise changing the pickups out if I wanted to use this guitar. As a silver lining though, they sounded alright when you coil tap them. Your mileage however may vary. As I say, I am not predominantly a humbucker guy, I prefer the sound of single coils. However, I know if I'm going to be playing a humbucker, it has to sound great and the Roswell pickups just aren't that. So I already own a fair few dual humbucker guitars and knowing that I'm going to have to switch the pickups out anyway, I'm going to switch things up a little bit with this one. So I'm considering a set of humbucker sized P90s for this one. Drop down in those comments below if you've got any suggestions for some really good sounding ones. My initial assessment of the pickups may have been a little bit harsh, so I decided I'd put them to the test at a rehearsal. I made sure that I adjusted the amp and the pedals to suit humbucker guitars so that I gave this the fairest of chances. So I did spend the entire night playing this guitar rather than switching up to the backup that I also bought. This suggests that the pickups aren't so bad that they are irredeemable at very least. As with most Roswell pickups though, I still only found that they were fine. They are not the type of pickups that will give you that face. You know the one that I mean when the tone is dialed in just right and it hits that spot. So they are a serviceable sound until I can replace them, but I'm less in a rush to change them out now.
The body wood for this is NATO which I pronounced incredibly wrong on the Fusion 3 video. The Fusion opts for Nyota. Hmm? NATO is an Asian hardwood, which many manufacturers, even quality ones like Ibanez, are using as a replacement for mahogany. I've also heard that tonally it is quite close to mahogany too, so you're expecting thick mid-range tones to be coming from this. That being said, because of the stainless steel frets, it adds quite a zing to the tone, so you get quite a balanced tone overall. We have the caramelized maple board and neck too. The caramelized maple has got a tactile satin finish to it, so it feels really great in the hand. Whilst we're mentioning construction, we absolutely have to mention the ergonomic cuts on this body. We have got a generous belly cut on the back, which is designed specifically for middle-aged men who have absolutely zero self-control when it comes to cake. There is an upper horn cut on the front and the back, which allows you to get really up high on those tiny, tiny strings. I'm not usually one to venture up to the tiny frets on a guitar, but it's nice to know that my poor coordination would be the thing getting in the way rather than the upper fret access. The heel joint is angled and rounded too, for maximum comfort and just to look cool. The hardware on this thing is punching well above its price point, I have to say. As I mentioned on the Fusion 3 review, the Wilkinson Trem is the kind that they use on Reverend guitars, which are much pricier. The locking tuners are smooth and are stable too, as well as boasting a tusk knot and stainless steel frets. I think it's hard for anyone to argue that you are not getting your money's worth here. I feel absolutely no need to be switching out any of the hardware. This Harley Benton Fusion T currently costs £255 over at Toman. But what are the alternatives if you are looking for a modern spec T type at this price point? The Squire Affinity Deluxe is a similar price point and sports two humbuckers. It is definitely more of a vintage instrument though, with traditional woods and feel. If it is more of a modern telly that you're looking for, ESP do the LT TE200. This is a bit more of a price jump, however, at £459. Squire offer the Contemporary Telecaster at £345, which is a really similar spec. Having seen it, I actually really like the look of that Contemporary Telecaster, and I might get one in for the channel. There is also the Larry Carlton T7, which is again another jump in price point at £499, but is really similar in terms of specs. I have heard talk online about the Larry Carlton and the Sire brand being really good quality as well. If you own a Sire or a Larry Carlton, let me know how you get on with it in the comments below. I'd really like some feedback because they are definitely on my radar. In terms of specs and value for money, it seems like the Harley Bentons seem to more than hold their own. I am still in the honeymoon period with this one, so it is really difficult to say how much I'm actually going to use it. The best way for you guys to tell how much I get on with it is by looking how much it features in videos in the coming months. Since buying the Fusion 3, it's appeared in almost every long form video that I've done since. So keep an eye out for this one in the future. If you think this guitar is ticking all the boxes for you, I'll leave an affiliate link below. If you do buy through that link, I'll get a little bit of a kickback, but you won't have to pay any more for it. Any purchases that you make through affiliate links directly support this channel but no pressure at all. I have mentioned the Fusion 3 a fair few times on this video. The link for the full demo of that is appearing on screen now. Thank you for watching and I will see you again on the next video.